from you, that's what I want If they try to put you down, I shoot They can never wear the same shoes They don't match up, is it lust? If you down, I can take you Do you remember the day when we actually first lay eyes on each other? started for us it was my first day of college and the first day of college I met her Shane was like behind me on the vending machine I wasn't thinking much of it I was just like it's a student there and he just wants to like use the vending machine or whatever and I don't know I try to get peanuts because I never I'm not a fan of like chips and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't want to eat none of that stuff at that time. I was trying to like venge off to the vegan life. And a Doritos came out. I, I don't know. I could have sworn that I picked the peanuts, but Doritos fell out. And when that happened, I just didn't want to throw it out. So I turned around and I was like, hey, would you like these? And... He was like, sure, and, he, and then he gave me his dollar. But I told him, like, nah, nah, it's okay. I, I don't want your dollars. Like, you could totally have the Doritos. But I insisted to give her my one dollar so that she can get the peanut that she wanted. And she actually took it, and she get her peanut, and then asked her for a number, and she gave me her Instagram. He gave me his phone and said, put your number in my phone, like that. So I was just there, like, you're brave. Like, you know, you didn't even say, hey, what's your name? Do you come to the school? He was just like, put your number in my phone. So I was like, do you have an Instagram? So I gave him my Instagram and he didn't use Instagram much. So he didn't know you could DM at that time. And I gave him my Instagram. And from there on out, he totally, like, he just... He just walked by me like he didn't even know me from that point on. And When she gave me her Instagram, I thought she wasn't interested in me, you know? So I didn't stress it, but I just feel like it was one of those situations where she's not interested, let's keep it moving. So that semester, I was here in school and I would just walk past her like, you know, she's not interested, nothing lost, no love lost, let's keep it moving. And for the entire semester, I would just focus on running track. I didn't care for nothing else but to just get grades and run track. And then the following semester, I saw Leanna and she called me in. One day I was in the cafeteria and I'm sitting there. They had like these black leather accent chairs. They were like single chairs. So I'm sitting on it and I see him coming down the stairs. So the accent chairs were like in front of the stairs, but you definitely have a walkway. But they had some accent chairs against the wall and he was coming down the stairs and I was like, um, I was like, hey, I was like, hey, hey, like, hi, do you see me? Excuse me. I was like, you remember me? And he was like, yeah. I was like, oh, like I finally get to talk to him because when I gave Shane the Doritos, it was like seven o'clock in the morning. I was rushing to class. I didn't even know what building I should be in, what class I should be in. I was so hungry. I didn't have no time to get breakfast. And then I just walked by this building, seen the vending machine, went in there. I didn't even belong in there yet. I couldn't even take classes in that building yet until I actually got tested and, and I had to pass a, a science test to get in the science building. So when I see him come down the stairs, I'm like, yo, do you remember me? I finally got a chance to talk to him. And he was like, yeah, I remember you. I'm like, where do you live? He was like, I, I live uptown. And I was like, oh my God, me too. What part of uptown do you live? He was like, I live on Gun Hill. I was like, I live on Gun Hill too. So he was like, what part of Gun Hill do you live on? I was like, I'm on Seymour. And he was like, oh, okay, I'm on White Plains Road. So basically he's on the other side, but he's really close. And I was like, why don't you take my number? So then I gave him my number. 
I did give him my number then. And I gave him my number because I was actually able to see his Instagram and see if he had a girlfriend or, you know, like kind of what kind of person he was. So when I looked at his Instagram, it was really humble and I, I then gave him my number. And finally when she gave me her number, I'm like, all right, maybe now she's interested. And we became close friends, guys, like best friends. And ever since then, we never stopped talking. She used to come to pick me up from track and field, pick me up from track. And I remember one day I was at training because as soon as I finished school, I'll go straight to training. So one day I was at training and I told her that my pants had ripped because I was in class. And when I stand up, the bench like gripped my pants and it was ripped open. And one day she came and she bought me like two bag of clothes of Nike the socks, the shorts, the shirts, sneakers. She bought me two bags of clothes. And that was really, that was a day of my life where I was like, yo, she's really genuine. Because she didn't have to. We were just friends. You know, I was running track and she knew I didn't have it really like that. I, I was, I never brag or try to put up a facade like I have it. I'll be honest to her, anybody, like, I don't have it like that, you know? Most of the time when in school, if I had money for food, she would buy me lunch. You know, she would buy me lunch. And she was just like my best friend, man. After school, we were together. So when I was running track and she bought me um, the bag of clothes, she started to, you know, be around more. She started to like input more, like t telling me how to dress and stuff like that. And she started to like chime in on my dressing. So she would buy me stuff for me to wear. And I really and truly appreciate that, man, because that helped me. You know, like, I came over here, I didn't have nothing but a drive, I have a mindset, I have goals, I have dreams. And that's all I, that's all I have being in America. And I was just ready to take on everything, take on my dream. And Lena became my best friend. Me in London changed my life. It was so special for me. When I first met my wife, she actually, she told me she had a daughter, but I never met London. She told me that she had a daughter. I think we started dating, and I was kind of iffy about, um, not that I was gonna get away from her or run away from her. I was like, I wasn't sure, you know? Because I know, I heard of consequences of dealing with um, a girl with a kid. I wasn't sure if I was ready for, not responsibility, but I wasn't sure if I was ready for any drama that to come with it. Because when I met her, her baby father at the time was in jail. So I wasn't sure if, how he gonna react when he get out of jail, what type of guy he is or anything. So when, he, when she first told me she had a kid and everything and we were dating, I sit and I wasn't, I was kind of like skeptic. I took a moment and I called my mom and I talked to her and I said, I really like this girl, man. I really do, you know, we were best friends and I really, really like this girl. And when she had a kid, I'm not sure how to go about it. And my mom said to me on the phone, was like, she said, listen, I have four kids, including you. If I should date a man right now, and he should tell me that he was not interested in me because I have four kids. How would you feel? And ever since then, that opened my eyes. You know, that opened my eyes 100%. So whatever consequences to come with me dating Leanna, having a baby, having a daughter, I was ready for it, whether it be drama or anything. So I look at it like that. You know, so off the rip, that just take everything away. Like, you know, I'm going all in. And ever since then, I was so excited. I, I went all the way in with it, man. I, I gave my full self. So when I first met London, you know, I remember the first day I met London, um, I came to the house and I came to tutor Lynn on some math. 
it was a math class she had and she had a test coming up or something and I came to like help her with math and London didn't like me at first and I understand why because she wasn't used to a man being around in the house and stuff like that so when I came around I met Lena mom because Lena was living with her mom I met um, Lena's stepdad Mike and London was a little angel running around because she was walking talking very clear and she was bold with her speech because she would walk up to me and say, why don't you just go home? So right then and there, I know I have a mission to take on because seeing that she wasn't an easy kid to just run to become attached to me like that. And I understand. I never judged it. I never wasn't upset. I'm like, okay, no, I have to focus on London. My focus wasn't to come around to be Focus on my on Leanna, on Leanna. No, I, I really believe that if if I can't win London over, I know the relationship more likely it's not gonna work. So if I can't have a good relationship with her daughter, the relationship more likely not gonna work. So every day when I when I would come around, I would bring her a gift, either I'll bring her a snack or a toy or something. I would bring for London, and I would find time like one on one time to play with London, like special moment, like. I created this bond moment with me and her. So despite in the beginning when she didn't like me being around, she's a child. So I, I, wasn't, I wasn't rushing it. I take my time with her for her to get to know me and see that, listen, I'm not arming your mom. I'm not here to arm you. I'm just here, I'm a fun guy. So I, I bring out the fun side of me. I would try to like do stuff with her, like do fun stuff. And I would like dim down to her level to do, play with her toys, act like a Barbie if I have to, do whatever she wanted just to win her over, you know? So I guess Leanna seeing that, it actually make her fall in love with me even more. Because I believe that if you don't love the child that that person come with, how could you really love them, you know? So my main aim was to build such a great relationship with London. And it wasn't easy, but the mission was completed and we created such a bond that she started calling me best friend. Where are they going today? <laughs> what does that word mean? What does that word mean, London? What, do, what does that word mean? Tell me. What does it mean? Anyhow. You don't know? You don't know? You are grouch. You are grouch. That's what the word means? Mommy is grouch. Don't say that. That's not nice. You said I'm a grouch. No, mommy is a grouch. You said it to me. No, I'm sorry, best friend. So everybody know me as best friend to London. Like she constantly call me best friend. Me and her everywhere. So many times where um Elena go in class, me and her outside, I'm bottom with London, playing with London. It was just fun. And it was fun walking with London because she was so intelligent that everywhere I go, even on the bus, taking a bus with her, she speaks so intelligent that everybody looking. Because they're like, wow, this kid is only two and she's speaking so clear and intelligently. I was like a proud man being around London, you know, and I wasn't her father, but I felt that fatherly proudness um, being around and like, listen, I'm honored to be in your daughter's life. And I constantly cherish that, you know, so every time that was my focus. So when I met London, it was a life changing moment for me because she taught me how to be a father before I was actually a father. She taught me so many ways. She taught me how to be gentle or to be soft or to be loving. All those aspects I have to find within myself to bring out, to actually make her um, create a bond with me, create a relationship. I cherish those moments like yes, yesterday. I cherish those moments and I hold on to them. And today I'm doing a surprise video on my stepdad by calling him dad. So today she, she wants to do a video calling her stepdad dad and she is really <laughs> excited about my it. My tummy is getting butterflies. It's getting butterflies. Guys, that's how excited she is about it. 
So guys, I'm gonna tell you the story about my life. It's a very complex story, guys, so let's start. I met my stepdad when I was two, and I met my biological dad when I was five. At ages one through five, I never really saw my dad when I was younger, only when I was five. This is a very big step, you know? I never thought London would be ready for this because she's been calling best friend a best friend for so many years. But I definitely think that this is going to be like a huge surprise for him and for everyone. And it's just, it's like so emotional. And it's an emotional state for Shane and, and, and um, London. I think this is really exciting and it's awesome. And I also believe that he's deserved that. He's always um, been Doing there. And stuff and best friend's been there for me a lot. Oh, I see him. You see him? Yeah. Oh! No! no, no. <laughs> She always gets like this, both of them from young. Oh, oh my god, yes, yes, yes. Guys, be ready to not like prank him, but video him and get his, his reaction. reaction. Guys, no, 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 no. Oh my god, he's right, right there. Oh, uh, shh. Go to the back, go to the back. Ah. Wait, 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 wait. What happened? What do you want? What do you want? Hi. 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 Hi baby. Hi babe. Hi Finn. You guys okay? Yeah. Hi. Hi. You guys are you sleeping? So. You're just chilling right now. Can you sleep alone? Let's go. Thank you for picking up your baby. How was your day? You just told me that. Yeah. What happened? My heart just knows she called me dad. I've been wanting to call you this for a long time. Really? She told me this. <laughs> she told me this, but I don't know. She even she even saved your phone number and her cell phone as dad. London, listen. You just made my day happy right now. Mm -hmm. You just made my day the happiest day ever. I really appreciate you. I love you. I don't treat you different from Scarlett. I love you like my daughter. I love you. Love you more. Give me a hug. I remember that day. I never forget that day. I don't think I don't think there's a day that I wake up that I don't reflect on that day. You know, the day when London took that leap and she called me dad. It was just a life changing for me. You know, even though before she called me dad. I was actually being a father figure for her. I was being everything for her, you know? But when she took that leap and called me dad, it made me so emotional, I wanted to cry. It was very, very hard melting for me that a little girl that I didn't create, that I didn't create, that I met at two, look at me as a dad and take the initiative to call me that, I feel, I felt honored. Until this day, I feel honored. You know, I'm blessed, super blessed that I could be that for her, you know? Because, trust me, it, it made me so emotional right now thinking about it, you know? It was just a moment to those never forget. I love that little girl. Even though she's not my blood, she's my baby. 
the bond we created over the years, the memories we created, it's just unbreakable, you know? And that day solidified everything, not just to us, but to the world, that our bond is unbreakable, no matter what. So it was just a life-changing moment for us and ever since she never she never stopped calling me dad so until this day even in, in the house i would just sit back and reflect on myself i'm like wow i am blessed that another child that i didn't create put me in a position for me to be their dad and that's my daughter she, we might not share the same last name we might not have the same smile or same face, same look. I might see another man smile when she smile, but she's my baby. And she's gonna forever be my baby, along with my baby Scarlett and my baby Shane. Those are my kids.